All right, comrades, we are now live and let's do this. You read the 14 points and what you find is that they mean something new to you every day because you have experiences that relate to these 14 points every day. points and what you find is that they mean something new to you every day because you have experiences that relate to these 14 points every day. Comrades, uh, this is Kobina Bantushenko, the Southern Region Representative of the African People's Social Party, and we are uh, excited about today's uh, discussion. I appreciate our comrades coming on, and looking forward um, to to having an exciting discussion. And more importantly, you know, being able to organize uh, in the Southern Region and, and get this out to to the southern, uh, to all throughout the south, the 12, the 12 states throughout the south. And, and one of the most significant things about the political education is influencing the terrain and helping people understand, you know, the conditions that we are in and why we're in these conditions and what's the way forward. And we can sum up some of the things that we're seeing uh, from the police murders to the evictions to, you know, uh, COVID, everything within these 14 point platforms in a way uh, uh, forward because it's important for us to do this because um, the way that colonialism sums up our conditions is that they, you know, uh, say that we're the problem and we internalize that oftentimes because we don't have another narrative. We don't have an alternative narrative, you know, but we want to, African internationalism, you know, helps turn that world right side up. You know what I'm saying? It helps us to understand the real world and what's going on and that the real criminals, you know, are, you know, the, this colonial system, this, this government, you know what I'm saying? We know that they're the real criminals and we turn the world right side up and help African people uh, raise up to their rightful stature. So that's why it's important for us to do this because we, we've been beat down so much in, in all aspects um, of our condition that they have had a monopoly on the narrative and we don't see the direction forward. And we here to say that we do have a, a, a way forward. And I salute my leadership, Chairman O'Malley Satella, who's been on the ground doing this uh, before I was born, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, I salute uh, Chairman O'Malley Satella um, and, and the African People's Socialist Party for, uh, you know, continuing the work uh, of Marcus Garvey, continuing the, the the Black Power Revolution of the 60s. So comrades, let's get to it. Um, we have today, we have point uh, number nine that we're gonna be studying. And this is, in my mind, you know, one of the, I mean, I like all the points, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, um, I was looking at a memory today on Facebook and uh, one of the things that it, that it pointed out it said that um, there's nothing more beautiful or graceful than the African woman. And, 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 and I unite, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I, we have to raise African women up to, to their proper 
leadership, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what the African People's Social Party uh, has done. And so we're gonna, today we're gonna be looking at uh, point number nine. I'm gonna um, share my screen so we can get right into the discussion. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate everybody coming on. We're gonna, we're gonna jump right into this thing. And um, let's see, let me share my screen. That was, yeah, it, it, it was a little couple of glitches. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. Can we get anybody to read this point? Any volunteers? Oh, I will. Oh, go ahead, come back, come back. Mm -hmm. Point number nine, we want an end to the political and social oppression and economic exploitation of African women. We believe the absolute unequivocal political, social, and economic equality of African women and men. We believe that a fundamental test of the progressive or revolutionary character of any organization, party, movement, or society is its commitment confirmed in practice to the destruction of the, so of the special oppression of women and the evaluation of women to the rightful place as equal partners and leaders in the forward motion of the development of human society and as leaders, makers, and shapers of human history. Uhuru, <coughs> before, before we uh, look at the main points, um, before we look at the main points, does anybody want to speak to or say anything or have any questions about Point number nine. Yeah, I um, I do. I, I appreciate this point in a real practical way um, because um, okay. so uh, because um, a lot of times, especially well, anyways, in a lot of different spaces, whether it be you know, cultural national sp spaces where, you know, even then where Black women may be raised up in a certain type of way um, or in, you know, spaces where like the Nation of Islam where the, um, the women are kind of seated in a certain type of position behind a man. But like in the party, um, you know, the party raises up African women in the most practical way. And not just because, not just because um, black women are divine and beautiful and all these other things, but raise us up as actual leaders, not because of our physical, you know, attributions, but because of, because the revolution can't recognize, the, the party, the chairman has recognized that the revolution can't happen if African women are absent and not just absent in participation, but if leadership from African women is absent, we can't liberate the entire nation of African people without that. So I just really appreciate this point um, because of that, because in a lot of different spaces as black women, we get raised up just because of our physical features that has absolutely nothing to do with freeing ourselves. Um, and, 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 it, and in a certain, it's really belittling because um, it, it doesn't speak to what we offer as, as leadership and what we offer as, um, as revolutionaries in this, um, in this struggle. Uh -huh. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I appreciate that, comrade. And I, I think that's that's right on. I think that I think that's right on. Do anybody want to add to that or, or uh have any uh questions or comments about anything that comrade Kundai just said or uh want to add on it in any kind of way? Uhuru. Yeah, I think that was clear and right to the point. I appreciate that, comrade Kundai. So we're gonna to move to uh, the main the main ideas of point number nine, which I think Kundai uh, touched on a lot of it. Uh, the political and social oppression and economic exploitation of African women must end 
Two, African women and men must be equal in every way. Three, any organization that calls itself progressive or revolutionary must be judged by its commitment to the liberation of African women. Four, African women must be equal partners and leaders and shapers in human history. Uh, man, that's <laughs> that says a lot, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and I unite with everything. Um, anybody want to say anything to those main points? Any questions, comments, thoughts? Hey, who can y'all hear me? Who we can hear you, comrade. Uh, I, I, I just got in. I've been having trouble. The links from my email wouldn't allow. They just don't work. And I was able to call in. I don't want to disrupt the flow. I just wanted to, you know, let it be known that I was just joining the meeting. This is my ethos. Who will come at Michael? Where you where you at, Michael? I'm up in um Ohio right now. Who who will come at? All right, who? Anybody else? Oh, this Revisa. Okay. Uh, I just want to unite with everything he said. And you know what I'm saying? Like, it's agreed that African women are like amazing and all this other stuff. But like, you know what I'm saying? Outside of what we look like, we bring a lot of other, um, you know what I'm saying? Talent and skills, just like anybody else would. And you know what I'm saying? It's critical that African women be viewed as like, people who are capable of anything that anybody else is and you know eligible to be put in leadership positions because sometimes women lead certain situations better and it's not necessarily because you're a woman it's just because you do and so I appreciate the party for you know speaking to that and saying that we can't be isolated and we can't be like put into certain sectors simply because like you know generally people would say that we're good at one thing when we could be good at anything so Oh, come right, real. So I appreciate that. That's right on. That's right on. And I, I think there's a lot that's even said in that. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, we 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 materialists. And as a materialist, you know, you you uh base somebody's ability to lead by their practical <laughs> leadership. You know what I'm saying? If they're able to uh, lead it it, it. it shouldn't matter. You know the gender is not the deciding factor on if if you can lead or not. You know what I'm saying? And 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 we have to be able to uphold that and uphold uh, uh, women leadership when 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 they are more effective and 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 the quality of uh, being able to lead the masses. We have to be able to uphold that and not uh, try to dapper that in no kind of way not try to hold that down in, in any kind of way you know what i'm saying and we have to fight against any backwards type of thinking that will try to prevent women from leading because of this uh thing of, of gender you know what i'm saying we can't allow those type of things uh to happen we have to fight against that you know what i'm saying so we definitely have to be able to uh raise women to their rightful statue. Is there any other questions or comments before we move to the before we move to the first question? Don't be shy. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. So we're gonna go to the first question. Hold on, let's see. Yeah. All right, so the first question is the equality of African women and men must be A, absolute political, social, and economic equality, B, equality only on Mother's Day, C, equality only when there is a babysitter, or D, all the above. Comrade um, Life, are you able to, to speak to that? And if y'all come around asking, turn on y'all cameras, you know, turn on your cameras if you can. I know sometimes we moving and shaking um, and it makes it a little difficult for us to do that. All 
All right, life might not be able to to speak. Um, comrade, I'm here, but uh, the, the comrade Ita Life um, is having the same issue. I was just on the phone with him. He called me just now, so I don't know what just happened. But I'm about to send him the passcode to meet and call like I did last week. So I don't know what you just said, but I'm here. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So go ahead and go ahead and resolve that, comrade. I appreciate you working that out. All right, Uhuru. Uhuru. Saeed, can you answer that? Mm. Yeah, um, it's the absolute political and social economic equality. Can you expound on that a little bit? Sure. Um, so the absolute political, social, and economic equality. So the question is the equality. I'm sorry, my grandson's right here. Be quiet. Um, the equality of African women and, and men must be, um, it has to be like it, it's like it can't be a false equality because um, colonialism tells us to look at the, the, like says that our status and our, our sense of success is based upon how, be quiet boy. Um, sorry y'all. Um, so it, 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 it's, it, requir- it, it says that, you know, the colonialism tells us that, you know, we're, you know, that, you know, we should be equal based upon with, you know, it, the, with, with white men in society have, you know, and that's why you have like the feminist movement and all these different other areas of saying, you know, once we have what you have, then we're cool. But in essence, with through African internationalism and what this question is saying is that we have, you know, what we equate and we measure our quality through, you know, you know, or, you know, absolute political, our, our social and our economics, that those things until they are sound and, and the, the damage has been repaired, and we have our own, you know, that we have, you know, we, we have Africa back, that we have, um, that we're more self-determined. We have our own institutions. Um, so we can control our politics. We control our social environment. We control our, our the, the air that we breathe, we, we, the water that we drink, and how we make our money. So that's how I look at that question. Uhuru. Uhuru, right on. Appreciate that, comrade. And... Um... I think it's important, you know, like she said, like we we have to see the different propaganda that colonialism put out there, you know, because they have you thinking <laughs> that you're only supposed to celebrate, you know, uh, women on on Mother's Day or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Or you know, women are left to be responsible for the children as if the man don't have responsibility, you know, in that. Or that's that's a a fixed position or fixed role. And we have to we have to destroy those boundaries. I think somebody said that even situations where you have organizations that require, you know, women to be here and men to be there, or women to be behind, you know, and it is it, it it really doesn't serve us to move the people forward in that way. We have to hold, we have to hold women up because um, you know, and not and, and fight against any type of oppression in any kind of way um yeah so i I just really really unite with this question and and helping to understand like you know we see these different avenues in in ways where we oppress women on a consistent basis and that contradiction has to be overturned we cannot do that in in no in no kind of way you know what i'm saying And, and and we have to fight against that on all on all fronts and uh and plus, women are a hell of a leaders. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I, I mean, we go on and on. But I wanted to see if anybody else had anything around this particular question or these particular points uh, before. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru, yeah. I, I think that, that it's important. I think what's, what's crucial, too, is the um, can, can you the say political education. This is Maito again. Uhuru Maito. I think it's... I think the, the the political education around this issue is crucial because, you know, in that colonialism, we also have to deal with the religious aspect. And in in a number of these Abrahamic religions, you know, women tend to be really subjugated um, and and not allowed to have any type of equal standing with men. Right? I mean, it's it's ordained by God that women should be up under men and and subjugated to certain roles within the family, within the society, not allowed to teach and et cetera, and et cetera. And so 
Yeah, I think that this is something, especially within a revolutionary or political organization, the political education is important and as it relates to our community because we're dealing with that stigma. And a lot of brothers in the quote unquote conscious community kind of sometimes carry that over when they, you know, when they're still dealing with a lot of the, the Abrahamic religions. And a lot of the sisters carry that that mindset coming out of those religions. And um I think that's something that's a really important issue in our community, especially as we're trying to move forward in in a revolutionary manner and in, in knowing the importance of our women being equally a part of our struggle and not just to the point where men are making all the decisions of what we allow, but allowing the sisters to to have the initiative and to to you know impart their vision and and take up that responsibility though you know what I mean like I've I've talked to sisters it's like look sisters this is not just about you you know men lifting you up on the shoulders like you're the queen and and carrying it around like. You, you know, first we we understand that analysis about the queen, but it's about you as a sister in internalizing the, the, the struggle itself and, and the politics of the struggle and the trajectory of revolution and, and what we're fighting for and and being serious about that and not just about your, your looks and your beauty, but your commitment and determination to the struggle itself and, and coming up with theory and coming up with strategies and, and implementing those strategies, you know, and, and, and taking your rightful place in our movement, you know what I mean? And, um, but that, that of course, which is what this is all about tonight, right? The, the political education. So I just, yeah, I unite with that, that point. I'm back off. Uhuru, Uhuru. Yeah, I appreciate that comrade, uh, Maito. Uh, anybody, anybody want to add to that or has questions around that or, you yeah, know, I, let's yeah, struggle with it. This is Andre Hill. And, uh, I'm the chairman of Urban Progress Alliance and the co-chairman of the um, Enlightened Ones Political Action Committee. Um, next year, I'll be 70 years old. And I've seen the 50s, the 60s, the transition in the 50s and the 60s to the so-called civil rights and the reoccurring recessions and economic uh, game plan by this European design. We're not going to win in this system. We cannot fix this system. We are right. at, at, this, at this point, we must separate. And I'm not coming from a religious perspective. I'm not coming from Islam. I'm not coming from Christianity. I'm coming from a metaphysical plane, understanding how these Europeans got in power and position. We have to create right now, immediately, our own political action committee, our own credit union, our own indigenous citizenship. Black men got to stop playing games with each other, competing with each other. We got to unite and demonstrate to our women that we're solid, that, that we got balls enough to confront this system. And the only way we're going to do it, we have to establish code of ethics among each other. Because if you, if you come in a, a counterfeit, they'll take you out. And I'm experiencing that this now. We've put all these pieces and these components in place. We, we're, we're looking at a credit union. We got a bank, uh, possible bank coming on uh, uh, for the, the, the credit union in Oklahoma City. Uh, we, we, we got the citizenship that will give us a dual citizenship. We got to separate. It, it, this, is, this is straightforward. We're going to have to recirculate this money. And once we uh, start depositing and circulating this money through our own banking system, we will be the ninth largest economy on the planet. Then we move in the direction of working with the other melanated countries, Africa and the Caribbean, and setting up a, 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 a credit or a, a um, monetary system based on intrinsic value and not the gains that the European Europeans play with. This this is this is based on my 70 years on this planet. If anything, if you're doing anything else, you bullshitting yourself, you know, and, and that's that's my recommendation. I can answer all kinds of questions. I've signed, I've ran many businesses and signed many payroll checks, and I've seen this system. And I know, I know, I understand what these Europeans are all about. They're very weak spiritually, and all we have to do is unite, and we will override them. I yield. 
Who appreciate that comrade, uh, Andre. And I, uh, does anybody want to say speak to that uh, before I say something? Or uh, it's like a couple people. I think Kundai. Like yeah, you. was it somebody else? They can go ahead first. Okay. Well, um, uh, um, okay. Sorry. My first question was, okay. The last person I spoke, you said you were chairman of, um, I'm sorry. I didn't hear the, uh, the organization. Yeah. yeah it's urban progress Alliance. Uh, you can go uh, to Virginia. They didn't take me at 3 p.m. I'm sorry. I think you, that was you, go to U, you, you got noise in the background. You can go to UPA ALL.com and send us some yeah, information. What about school? The, the stuff we are not mouth somebody, somebody need to mute. Oh, that's probably me. I'm on the plantation. The, um... Yeah, yeah. You can go to UPAALL.com, send us a message. You want to get involved, we will tie you into our political action committee. We're moving aggressively with young brothers and sisters from all over the country that understand that this, this ain't gonna work anymore. This is, they, they're moving, they're parasites and they're moving in the direction of finding them a new host because we are no longer a good host. We started to reject them. And so they're moving us out for, in, into a position of extermination. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. thank you. So um, it was a couple of things that, um, like, uh, I, I really appreciate the input. And I think also too, um, Kobina, it would be good to do, um, like once we get past the platform, some things like just in terms of like um, other studies that we could do, like even buzzwords, like, um, like metaphysics versus materialism and that kind of thing. Cause I think that we'll kind of get off topic from the point today, like going into that. But um, yeah, I think as, like in, in response to that, um, some of those things, uh, I think it would, you know, afterwards to maybe talk a little bit more about some of like the economic work of this organization that's led by, kind of tied back in, by led by African women, um, Deputy Chair Ona Zanaya Shatella, and the economic work of the African People's Socialist Party is um, not necessarily just around us, like controlling capital and circulating black dollars without, you know, um, under capitalism, but where we can learn certain practices that are tied to an end goal of not just separating, but destroying capitalism, this, the, the social system that, that, that exploits us because, you know, two social systems can exist at the same time. And so to deny capitalism or to de deprive the colonizer would mean what what are we building then you know what's the alternative and that's what you know in part with this study is for us to bring people closer towards socialism where we're not just circulating the dollars in, in the black community while we still um vulnerable to police brutality um and other uh you know what they might call um, natural disasters, as we call it, and I mean, like imperialist imposed disasters, you know, um, being able to just circulate the capital doesn't necessarily solve those problems, um, unless, again, it's tied to a revolutionary ideology that's towards building socialism. May we have your attention, please? The library will be closing. So, in um, if you need a so yes, card. but I didn't want to get too far off topic, but I did want to address those points, being as this is something hosted by the African People's Socialist Party, and um, maybe, you know, like Uhuru Abinki, there's like a, a, a bank that's being developed right now by the party, another economic work that I think would be, be good to, you know, be informed of and to learn more about, but, and I'm sure there's some sort of follow-up process that Kobina is over, but I think it would be kind of take us a little bit away from point number nine today. Um, but I did just kind of want to clarify some of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think those are good points. And, and, you know, I think we have to be able to, uh, we're materialists and, and, and we have to be able to, uh, not allow, and, you know, colonialism is a parasite. Let me say that first. And that's what the chairman puts out is that it's a parasite and we the host, you know what I'm saying? But we cannot allow in, uh, colonialism to fracture our, our struggle for freedom in, in no kind of way. 
You know what I'm saying? And 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 this is why, you know, we uphold Garvey as so significant in our history, is because Garvey was uh in, in a lot of ways laid out a blueprint of what we had to do in order for us to govern. Our goal is to govern. Our goal is to be in control of all of our resources, human and natural, and, and for us to uh, raise up, you know, uh, uh, in oppression on any level, you know what I'm saying? And, and there is a special oppression of, of, of African women because you have a history of men under colonialism oppression African women as well. But, you know, uh, we have to be clear that our, our end goal is to end all oppression and for us to govern. You know what I'm saying? It's not to be hunky-dory with uh, the parasite. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's for us to overturn this, this system, overturn colonialism, and to, for us to govern and be in control of our own resources, human and natural. And, and that cannot be done uh, if uh, African women and African people are not raised to their rightful stature. You know what I'm saying? And we have to be able to say that. And we can't even, we can't be fractured in, on no level. That's why Garvey had one organization that was organizing African people all over the world, seeing us as one African nation. We are one African people. You know what I'm saying? It's not African people in the South or African people in the, in, in the Caribbean or Africa or some type of person in, in Ghana. We are all African people. And these colonial borders that was created was created um, to serve colonialism. Just like oppressing African women was served to, to, to benefit colonialism. And so we have to see that that's a way for them to fracture you know, our struggle uh, for freedom. Because even you have some type of feminist, and I'm sure there's people that can speak more in depth to this than, than myself, you know what I'm saying, that you have, uh, 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 this is how the white, le the white left and the white feminist movement, you know, uh, uh, win African women to uh, feminism is by fracturing the revolution and fracturing the, the, the nation by, by saying that, you know, our goal is to, to get equal to white people, or, uh, to white men. We saying our goal is for us to be free for us to be in control of our own resources and for us to govern. And that means that we need some economic development plan, which Kundai was mentioning in some of those projects, but we have to have one direction and one clear trajectory, which Garvey, said, Garvey showed us. And I think Chairman O'Malley Isatella has been leading that to address all these questions and, and all these problems of the revolution. But I do wanna, um, and we're gonna we're gonna deepen this discussion because I think it's important. And I, I want to get to uh question number two, and we can continue uh 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 the discussion as well. Um uh, so yeah, let's do this. So we're gonna go to question number two, and 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 I like the active crowd, you know what I'm saying? I like everybody's input, so we're gonna uh uh see about somebody volunteering to answer this question and expound on it a little bit because we want to show the differences in, in the political line because sometimes things come in, in, in snippets and you don't even know that you, you're getting a snippet of a worldview uh, just by you know a, a, a one sentence, that this is something that a worldview uh, that, that somebody is giving you. And we say in our worldview is African internationalism, which helps us to sum up the world in the right way and understand that this is a parasite, you know what I'm saying, that, that we're dealing with. And we there is no, there's nothing redeemable about this system. Nothing, 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 nothing. So we want to ask a volunteer, African women must do what? Play, play the primary role in raising children, B, be elevated to equal partners and leaders in our struggle uh, and society, C, always take minutes, or D, cook all the food. Miss Anna. <laughs> you want to answer that question? <laughs> um, I would say that's B, uh, being elevated to equal partners and leaders in our struggle in society. Oh, right on, right on. You want to expound on? You want to expound on that a little bit? Um, let's see. So, um, majority of 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 
our society decides that women should do one thing and one thing only. And that's far from the truth, right? Because women are multidimensional beings and we are able to lead. Um, we are able to plan, we're able to prepare and um, all of those other things, right? That are there playing a primary role in raising children that is important. Um, taking minutes, I, I don't know, you know, uh, a lot of people think that we're ad admin and that's uh, it's commendable, right? But we do much more than just admin and we do much more than just cook food. Um, so if we're to be together, then we have to be on equal partner level. Like there, there can't be somebody that is more, all of us have an important role to play and all of us should be allowed to play those roles. We shouldn't be told what role to play. We should um, embrace anybody's talents, their skills, and allow them to come to the table with that and to thrive in that, right? Um, it's hard to be a leader of organizations. It's hard to be a leader of people because you have to understand that all different personalities and um, struggles come with that, right? So everybody is going through their own thing. So you have to be considerate of all of those things that people are going through. And women um, most cer certainly have the ability to look at different situations and analyze them, right? And so we're able to look at um, and consider that maybe you don't have the capacity to do what it is that you want to do but you have some capacity to do something, right? And we're not so gung-ho that it has to be this one way, right? We're able to look at things differently and just evaluate um, differently. So yeah, elevating us to equal partners, like, yeah, I mean, we we can't do it without each other. Ooh, right raise on. my hand. <laughs> right on, right on. Any, anybody else wanna add to that? Yeah, I, I can give a little input. Coming from a metaphysical perspective, there are 144 different human personalities. There are cardinal personalities, there are mute personalities, and fixed personalities. You have some women that are capable of going on the front line and, and, and going into battle uh, more so than staying home and, and cooking and, and nurturing. You know, so you have to you have to take in consideration all of those multiple personalities and let people get in where they fit in. Uh, to designate to say that women uh, should only be doing this and only do that, you're going to have some serious issues if you don't understand. You you might have a, a woman with a double cardinal sign, and she's not thinking about nothing about cooking. She's she's using that energy, her frequencies, to to, to come up with tactics on how to take the enemy out or how to protect the, 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 the neighborhood. So, so this is why it's so critical for us to elevate our frequency to understand what metaphysics is all about. Because it's been tried with Islam, it's been tried with Christianity, and it's failed. Our biggest problem right now, we got all these egotistical leaders that wants to be the one, I'm the savior, I'm the savior. And it's not gonna be done. We have to put the natural order back in place. We gotta get old heads and, uh, uh, like myself and, uh, and create a council of elders, you know, because all the generations behind, we, we failed the generations behind you. But you got some old heads that realize that and know we need to sacrifice ourselves, stand out front to, in order for the generations behind us to, to, uh, to be restabilized. We, we, we mutated for over the last 400 years. And that mutation caused our women to take a totally different attitude towards the men and vice versa. So we got some serious healing to do, but it still has to be based on understanding the dynamics of the diversity and all of the human souls on this planet. Uru, we call that colonialism. Right, I was <laughs> we've, been, that right. We've, been, we've been colonized, you know what I'm saying? And so we done took on the, 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 the characteristics of colonialism, you know what I'm saying? And that's what we have to, we have to be clear that colonialism is, is the contradiction. You know what I'm saying? We can't be, and even, even when we are at odds with each other, we have to understand that we're at odds with each other based on colonialism. It's like you got, you got right now, you know, bordering countries fighting each other. You know what I'm saying? And they're not fighting for the interests of, 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 of African people. They fighting on, in the interests of, of France and, 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 and America. 
And you got the same thing right here in, 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 in America. You got Africans, you know, we having what, the, what we call horizontal violence because of the vertical violence that have, has come down on us and has created these artificial borders. And we have to be able to understand that. And that's what I meant by fracturing. We can't allow them to fracture any aspect of, of, our, of our road to freedom. You know what I'm saying? And, and we have to, as a materialist, we have to be able to understand that the, the primary contradiction is, is, is colonialism. We have to fight against that uh, uh, tooth and nail on, on, every, on every front. You know, so, uh, you know, I, I really want to, you know, appreciate uh, the discussion. I want to see if anybody else had anything before we move to the, the, next, the next question. Look like comrade life, <laughs> like you. <laughs> like your eyebrow was raised on the left side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Uhuru, comrade. Um, I, I, I just would say that I really appreciate Chairman Amadi Yusatella and um, <clears throat> the 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 leadership that he provides. You know, <laughs> especially um, in the recent years, in the Omali taught me studies on on Sundays uh, at eight from eight to ten Eastern. Uh, this last study, Chairman, you know, right now we're studying di <clears throat> di dialectics, uh, materialism and the dialectical method. And um, this past Sunday, I believe it was this past Sunday, if not the Sunday before, where we talked about how you can't have motion without matter. In, in any morning, you can have matter without motion. Um, and so when I hear, you know, Andre and others talk about metaphysics, you know, I ain't necessarily got no serious struggle with the concept of metaphysics as long as that metaphysics is based on material shit you know um because me metaphysics in 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 the world uh has to do with things that exist and um so you know i, I like uh i think comrade kunda said this might not be this, this certainly is not the um the 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 study for this but uh you know i, I would hope that anybody who uh, uh, would suggest that metaphysics has some impact on our existence. They must understand that whatever metaphysical shit has some impact on our existence is based in our material reality. You know, um, like Chairman would point out when they say don't eat the uh, the pig's foot, you know, because God told them not to. Well, you know, that's the way that they had to say it in order to get people to move a certain kind of way because if you eat that shit, it makes you sick. You know, a material reality uh, dictated uh, a kind of metaphysical, uh, 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 metaphysical um, expression of that material reality, if you will. And so, I, I would, I would hope uh, that people don't get, um, um, don't try to separate uh, material reality from uh, from the contradictions that we face and the solutions that we must. Uh, 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 Crab for ourselves in the face of those contradictions. Oh, oh, I appreciate that. And we're gonna put the the link to Omali taught me because the last few studies that the chairman has been done doing on uh Omali taught me again, which is every Sunday at um 8 a.m. Eastern and um has been around dialectical materialism and, and helping to even understand the different forms of that. Cause I know some people, you know, uh, are not aware of those terms like metaphysics and materialism and uh, dialectics and what those things mean. But those are modes of, uh, of, of being able to examine uh, the world, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's, not, it's not something that's, that's clear, you know what I'm saying, to, to a lot of people. and, and and even people that, you know, initially reading it, it it's a struggle to really get, grab some of it, but what you can, you can uh, do it. But I think uh, the chairman points out things in, in such a clear and concise way and even raise some of the contradictions that, you know, uh, forces like uh, uh, Marx and Engels may have, may have had in, in, in their development of it. But I think you should definitely tune in Sundays uh, 8 a.m. Eastern, uh, Omali taught me and really grapple with uh, some of these terms because it really helps you understand the world that we're living in and, and, and what's some of the things that's, that's happening. So 
Um, we're gonna move to question number uh, question number three. And what does this mean in relation to the objective conditions of African people? What does this point uh, mean in the objective conditions of African people? Anybody? Uhura, I think. I don't know. You want me to go? Or I can wait for five. Anyone else want to go? Got that go already. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on, Anwo. I ain't heard Anwo in this. Come on. I spoke <laughs> earlier. <laughs> But you ain't say Anwo. Uh oh, Anwo. Hey, Anwo everybody gonna be grabbing for the mic in a minute, man. You know what I'm saying? So let's, that's what I, I like to see. National <laughs> Women's Organization. Can I see the screen again? Did you? We took it down. Do you need to see the point or just uh... the point that you're referring to? Like, what is this? No, you said you just had a point when does this mean by objective conditions was that can you show that screen i want to see the full sentence number three okay so what does this mean to the re relation to the objective conditions of african people i think that there's several ways to answer this question but what's resonated with me now and is hearing the conversation that we have right now is that we have to realize the conditions and the summation as what colonialism has put us in. That colonialism has, um, you know, when you think about the history and, and Chairman does a wonderful job of talking about the history, how in Europe after the, um, the black death, they, they lost almost two thirds of their population. And so they had to find a way to replenish their production. And so around that time, I wanna say it's around 15, 1600, that, that time is when they started to um, impose on other borders of out, outside their own, for lack of better words, jurisdiction or their own country. And so they you know, pillaged Africa. And so and to do that, they had to put in not only false borders, but they also had to put in false ideas. The idea that keep us from being, you know, to make sure that they can control the production, they had to control us mentally. And so we have, and they have introduced certain things to make sure that they keep that control. One of the things they have introduced is is religion, spirituality on some level, even though religion and spirituality predates this, they use a certain method to do it. And even when you look at the Abrahamic um, religions that it has this whole submissive type flavor to it. So some of those things, you know, have conditioned our minds to think that the only way that we can really progress or to, to live through the society that has been um, destroying us is to conform, conform to it or to say, and it's been around so long of saying that, that they have the right way because they have the most money, they have the most control, they control our education. And we see these things, but the beautiful thing about African internationalism is that it removes us from that and helps us to see it through that lens that they are using us, as Kobina said earlier, and as the chairman teaches us about, you know, parasitic capitalism, parasitic colonialism, that it has to thrive off of our labor. We can't even get to a sense of peace because mental illness is a result of colonialism. It's a result of those things. So the African internationalism not only shows us the condition which we live in, it also gives us a solution to do that in a very tangible way. And also it helps us to, you know, as women, to say that we don't have to choose this false narrative because um, the history of feminism is that that you know, being that that women have to be subservient to men, that white women said, no, we're not gonna to continue to do that. So therefore we wanna do the same thing you're doing, but what the hell was the same thing they're doing? They are practicing colonialism. They have colonial domination. So if that's what white women are doing, even in the feminist movement, they use the bodies of black women to get to their own liberation. It did not address our economic conditions, didn't address our reproductive conditions, didn't address um, the fact that they took our children. And lastly, African internationalism teaches that, you know, how to view reparations and why reparations is due to us, due to all the damages that are there. So we can address opening up our mind and, and freeing our mind. We can address, you know, I can move to somewhere we're closer where there's black people or whatever, but in truth, they have stolen a whole fucking continent and took the people out of it and took the resources out of it 
And so therefore, I don't care how free I feel or where I go after I live, I want to create a place where my children and my grandchildren can realistically and can tangibly be able to thrive with liberation. Uhuru. Right on, right on. <laughs> that's that's one that one. Oh yeah. One. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru, come on. And if there's any black women that feel what what Saeed just said, y'all better join Anwo. Join, join, and we'll join the part. Look, that, that's one of the, the statements when you drop the mic. <laughs> right on, right on. All right, I'm so we're going. I'm going to raise my hand one more time as an old head. And then hold on, comrade. Let's, let's see if anybody else has anything before we come back to you. Okay. The whole rule. Maito, was you about to say something? Or, uh... No, I was just uniting with that sisters. That's all. Okay. All right, so anybody else? All right, come right, go ahead, come right, Andre. Okay, so first of all, these Europeans, they have nothing but an illusion. They have nothing. What we have done is sign documents outside of the treaties that they built. We have, out of ignorance for greed and, and material possessions, we have signed documents deeding our land over to them because of the economic pressures that they apply to us. These, these Europeans were not intelligent enough to develop the program of white supremacy. White supremacy is not a person nor a group of people. It's a program. It's used to divide and conquer a species. And so they were the weakest link in this external entity who these Caucasians signed this pact with, gave them the technology to manipulate us against each other. The 144 signs that I just talked about, or the 144 different personalities, I can pick out individuals that are prone for corruption. They use that technology. They go into a country and identify individuals that are prone for corruption, and they put them in charge over a country, knowing that they're going to be paranoid, murdering some of my bitches. You know, so the illusion, we will dissipate that by coming together as one, united. Is in that technology of uh, unconditional love for each other, for the leaders to stop ego tripping and say, hey, we all got the same objective. Bring that technology, it will override nuclear uh, weapons, uh, aircraft carriers, F-35s, all of those illusions can be overwritten through our unified front. But we have to understand the dynamics of the contract that these Europeans signed. They're not intelligent enough to know how to do that. So Uhuru. we can reclaim this through a unified front. Uhuru. I, I, what I would say as a materialist and a dialectician and a scientist, we have to, you know, uh, what they have, they got guns and this is what they have done. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a, it's not a, this is a material reality. You know what I'm saying? That uh, they didn't, they didn't convince people to sign documents when they gave the indigenous people smallpox and when they held people at gunpoint and 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 and, and did these different things. They 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 forced, you know what I'm saying? But the reality is that them creating colonialism and and, and uh stealing people's land put people in a position where they have where they are detached even from each other, detached from our resources. And it's not because you know, just any paperwork is because they have right now, you know, they have from AFRICOM to, to the police department, to the, the Navy, to the, the Marines, to the army, because these forces are there. And the thing that defeats them, I mean, the Taliban, uh, 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 these comrades just show, you know, how to, how to, you know, extradite them out of your, of your country. You know what I'm saying? We have to, you know, Cuba is a prime example of, you know, overturning this contradiction. There has to be a revolution. If there's, they're not going to willingly give this shit up, you know what I'm saying? Just like we didn't willingly give it up. They're not going to willingly give it up, you know what I'm saying? And this is the reality that we face with. But I want to, I want to, um, and, and like I said, we, we, this is a, a discussion that has to be deepened, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not just a mere, um, you know, bullet points or, or questions. This is something that that we have struggled with in understanding what is the best method 
in order for us to get free, not to, you know, be able to have discussion for discussion sake, but what is the best practical way for us to get free? And 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 as a scientist, you 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 apply your theory, and 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 in applying the theory, you 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 applying the theory and working it, it helps to inform your theory and make adjustments as you begin to develop. And 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 this is what Chairman O'Malley Teller has done with African internationalism is being able to sum this up and apply it and be able to create a way forward and a trajectory that would get us free and organized. But I want to I want to go to this last question that we're going to deal with today before we move to the the next section of the program, and that is um, and anybody can take this. How do you see this reflected in the work of the African People's Socialist Party? And the Yahoo movement, whether it's campaigns, programs, etc. You know what I'm saying? I want to, you know, see who want to who want to answer that question, and 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 uh, and let's build on that before we before we move to the next section. Any volunteers? Do I? Like, I ain't got to call nobody, though. I said, call on Saeed. <laughs> oh, number, what number what question is it Let, let's get let, uh number four and yendu can you speak to that okay the thing over there that just got on late because i've been trying on the work wrong you, okay all right that was but, up that was up <laughs> but, all right uh, <laughs> i had to find out what what was what point it was on you know and so i got a problem with that but uh, uh so, from from what i've heard then we uh uh, it's point number nine, dealing with uh, we oh, want yeah. an end to the political and social pressure and economic exploitation of African women. Yeah, okay. Why you gotta be so messy? <laughs> Tunda, you gonna mute. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this, uh, the way we reflected in you know the work of the African People's Social Party and the rural movement is that we got programs, you know, like we was talking about and and annual. We develop those programs where you know to help, uh, help 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 the you know the African women's help, help them uh, uh, understand what we're going through and let them understand that we there's no idea of separation and stuff. All of us in this together, but you know we, everybody can have the organization. They can uh, they can work better with it. Make, they can say one system might speak better to the other one, but you know that's just a little bit. But anything because as long as you get the truth about everything. You know, it doesn't matter who's saying it, but we do have organizations for women in particular, you know, who go about organizing, but they're doing the same work we're doing. So it's, it's, it's really a collective. We just might say that's it's a cell of, of the African people's social body. But uh, that's been the work, you know, like I say, you can go by the work that the party's done. We always, we got women in leadership and all that kind of stuff like that, you know, so. That's what I have to say, because uh, like I said, I, got, I just got in, so I'm sort of behind. Oh, I appreciate Ooh. that, comrade. Appreciate that, comrade. Anybody else? Saeed, do you, uh, Saeed I know you, you've been called out now, so you can't put it on me. I ain't picking on you. Somebody else called your name. <laughs> you can brother something up. I think, you know, just from what you were saying, just the... Um, kind of continue with that is that the, the beauty and a wonderful thing about African internationalism is that it brings all black people together. That it, it, it is the call to bring all black folks together, no matter where, where you live at, no matter what your sexual orientation is, no matter what your religion is, like bring people to bring all black people together because we all face the same oppression from colonialism. But not only does it do that, because we have heard many times and in many generations, and we have multiple multiple generations on this call, that there's been many groups from the Black Power Movement, from religion's perspective, that have said that we need to unite. And so I believe that we all know that we, you know, even on the air, on the, on, the, on the bus, when you're talking to somebody and they say, you know, Black people need to get together. But, but African internationalism and the African People's Socialist Party not only tells us to unite, it gives us a method and a regional strategy in order to make that happen through organization. That it gives us all the components, all the roles, all the, the necessary things we need to infiltrate colonialism and to build our own dual and contending solutions. Because if we unite and we get our own country or do whatever people want us to do, we have to have organization. And we have to have, be able to do that so we can defend ourselves. We look at what happened in other countries who try to you know, um, 
achieve this and either they didn't have military backing or they were uh, what we call neo-colonialists that they're, they're trying to do it um, based upon you know what white people have or, or what colonialism have set forth so therefore they say okay this is the government that they put in so this is how we're going to govern whereas the african people's socialist party tells us how to govern and it gives us those things so in order to do that come into the african people's socialist party so you can be a part of an organization where everyone who has who is a member is willing to work towards this end goal that this is something that's already in place it's not a wish dream it's not you know we can have it we have those institutions right now we have our own economic development institutions right now not only in this country but throughout the world and we're continuing to, to thrive do we struggle yes because we have colonialism but yeah. we struggle together and you and you know as a fist you know you know there's one of the things that Anne will had in our last convention was you know one voice but many fists if we are fighting then we're going to be more powerful and so and that means powerful economically socially through our health and everything so that's my answer to that question Uhuru. 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 appreciate that comrade and and i, I just really Uhuru. want to Uhuru. who's speaking sorry about that comrade i'm just uniting with this okay that was up that's what's up I, I like i like that uniting you know what i'm saying that's what's up yeah i want i want to uh really appreciate you know comrades coming on in this discussion um and and I want to acknowledge, you know, Comrade uh, Faro, uh, uh, Kamos was was and and also in Yindu was having struggles coming into the meeting, and and but those comrades stuck it out and and, and made it happen. So I, I appreciate y'all comrades coming through. Uh, you know what I'm saying, and and uh, and and Miss Miss Jaquita, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I see, I see. Can can we real briefly before we move to the. Um, Next session, can can people just say where you where you where you located? I was, I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah, Uru life. I'm in Tampa, Florida. Oh. Uru, I'm in Fort Myers, Florida. Uru. I'm in Norfolk, Virginia. Uru. <laughs> I'm in Winter Springs, Florida. Uru. Uru. I'm in um, Greenville, South Carolina. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What's up, uh -huh. comrade? This is Ma Maito. I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh -huh. LaShonda out of Tampa, Florida. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anna in Tampa, Florida as well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anna. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uhuru Kundai in Huntsville, Alabama. Uhuru Kundai. <laughs> yes, I'm here. I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. Uhuru, Uhuru, comrade. All right, comrades, I appreciate that. We're going to move to the next section. I ain't miss nobody, Ditter. All right, this was up. So I'm going to turn who, it over to Life. Is, Life is going to do one. Who is 813336 or 813? Um, was that eight one three three six five? Who was that? Who number in it? Oh one six four. I'm not sure what that is. Can you unmute and say who you are? If you're talking, you're on mute. I Which one? Question, I'm mute. It's eight one three three six five oh oh one six four. All right. I got um I got an eight six four number. I know I got an eight six four number. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know eight one three numbers in Florida. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's in Florida. Eight one three three six five. Eight one three three six five. Eight one three three six five. Eight one three 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 three I was trying to get on Zoom, but it wouldn't uh, let me, so I just joined by audio. Ooh, but, uh, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I just want to reiterate that too. I mean, maybe I'm already late on that, but that Zoom link, I tried several different computers and it, it, it doesn't work. So I must just wanted to make sure that was known. All right, we'll, we'll do a little troubleshooting. Uh, between now and next meeting to have that resolved. So people coming back on shouldn't have that same problem. All right, but I'm gonna hand it over to Comrade Life. I appreciate y'all raising the contradiction so we can solve it. 
uh, Comrade Life to, to do, you know, the call for uh, the party. Who, comrades, I really want to, you know, again, express the appreciation for y'all coming on. As you know, this is the African People's Socialist Party Southern Region's uh, political education. And we do this every week um, in order to deepen our understanding of African internationalism, not just so that we are smart Africans and that we know more, but also that we so that we can change the world. And the only way we're going to change the world is with revolution. And the only way we're going to have a revolution is if we have revolutionaries. And the only way you can be a revolutionary is if you belong to a revolutionary organization. And there's only one revolutionary organization uh, for African people in the world today, and that's the African People's Socialist Party. You can't be a revolutionary without belonging to uh, an, a revolutionary organization. And you cannot change the world if you ain't a revolutionary. And I, I know that you want the world to be a better place, a different place for yourself, for your children, for people whom you love. So join the African People's Socialist Party. You see what we're about. We're about learning. We're about struggling. We're about building. We're about uh, uniting Africa and Africa. African people all around the world. And you can participate in, in, in this struggle for your own freedom, for your own liberation, for your own prosperity, for your own better future, for your own better world. Just uh, hook up with the African People's Socialist Party. You can put it in the chat right now that you want to be a revolutionary today uh, and join the African People's Socialist Party. You can log on uh, to the internet and, and check us out at APSPUHURU.org and join the African People's Socialist Party there. The most important thing though, is no matter how you do, you can send a letter uh, to the Uhuru House if you want to, right over there uh, on uh, Tyron Lewis Ave in St. Petersburg, Florida. You know, uh, like, uh, I think it was, uh, who was it, Anita Baker? Somebody said, you know, it don't matter how you get there, just get there, right? And so uh, we want you to do that tonight. Just get there, become an African revolutionary tonight. Be a part of the changing world, the world that you change, the world that you make better, Uhuru. Uru. Comrades, yeah, Uru. if you want to join, like you said, put it in the chat. Say nothing. I mean, raise your hand now. You know what I'm saying? Jump up and shout. Or you can, like, go to the link, APSP or who.org. And we also have a goal in these uh, political education because we know, uh, as they used to say back in the day, freedom ain't free. We have a goal in raising $100 every political education for us to uh, uh, continue this work that we're doing because we're not you know, we, we, we got to organize and, and, and um, you know, uh, uh, forward our own struggle. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of the things that made Garvey significant. He organized the African working class to participate. And I read uh, in, in a lot of instances that some people would even do like a dime uh, a day. They had a dime stock in the Black Star Line, but it was the people that raised up the Black Star Line and, 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 and the uh, Garvey movements businesses so they funded the people funded themselves so it was it was working in the interest of the people and we have to be able to do the same you know what i'm saying because our oppressor the colonizer is not going to donate for you to liberate yourself from the colonizer you know what i'm saying if they give you a donation they know that they're giving a donation to the the the, the police department that's going that's going to murder you and in fact you know it's been a situation where an African done, I mean, an African done been murdered by the police department and they raised millions of dollars for the person that did it. You know what I'm saying? Not only did they get off and said it was justifiable homicide, but they also got a pay raise. And we saying that we got to raise resources for ourselves to put an end to that. So we have a hundred dollars uh, uh, that we need to raise today. And I think that we can do that, comrades. Uh, and, and if anybody want to just donate a hundred dollars, I can shut up and, and we, can, we can go ahead and and move to the announcements, but um, and the way that you can donate is uh, dollar sign. You can cash out with dollar sign APSP South, uh, dollar sign APSP South. And um, if you have any donation, speak up and let let it let it be known so we know that uh, who's donating and how much we have, and we can make that goal happen. And I can say I crank it up. I started off with uh, with with with. Fifteen dollars myself, and that that's 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 what I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, put towards that. So now we only have eighty. What's that? Eighty five dollars left. Anna Jones, that's what's up. 
She got five on it. You know what I'm saying? They got a song about that. You know what I mean? She got, I got five, five on, on it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That might need to be in the background right now. You know what I mean? Ain't no amount too small and ain't no amount too large. And if you're anywhere in the middle, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you got to, to make this happen. I see somebody donated uh, 10. Who was that? Saeed. Saeed donated $10. That's what's up. That's what's up. So that's $30 right there, comrades. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Indu put 20 on it. You know what I'm saying? So that's $50. We, we halfway there. We halfway there. $50 left. You know what I'm saying? Comrades, uh, Kundai got 10. So that's what's up. So now we only need uh, $40. $40 and we we going to be there. You know what I'm saying? We can make we can make that happen, I think, in the next three to four minutes. You know what I mean? No Uhuru Pharaoh. I'm just getting my I'm just getting my uh I'm just getting my cash app thing right so I'll be able to contribute next time for sure. Uhuru, you, you can make right. a future contribution right now <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We <laughs> yeah. no doubt, no doubt. You know doubt. what I'm saying? If you can't contribute uh uh today, you can say I can do it by, by Wednesday, you know what I mean? We can we can make that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah we I take mean, metaphysical contributions. <laughs> <laughs> Hit it with that hundred forty four. That's what's up. That was up. Lashonda, Lashonda Clark. That's what's up. Lashonda Clark. She look. She got me. She got me stumbling and fumbling and 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 and, and speaking you, speaking in tongues. She uh, she donated forty dollars. Comrade, we don't raise the hundred dollars right there. You know what I mean? So I appreciate that, Lashonda, Lashonda Clark, and I appreciate all the comrades making a donation. Um, making the donations to help us reach our goal of a hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? We want to win more and more people to this process so we can continue to do this because these resources are going to help us to build a Southern region of African people for our socialist party in order for us to advance the revolution. You know what I'm saying? And we know our leadership, Chairman O'Malley Chatella, has been out here in the fight on the ground and the struggle to uh, 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 continue and, and, and end uh, the Black Power Revolution of the 60s, you know what I'm saying, to finally put the last death blow to, to, to colonialism. And next year, comrades, the party will be celebrating 50 years of struggle. You know what I'm saying? 50 years are on the ground. There has not been another revolutionary organization in our history to have that type of continuum. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of times revolutionary organizations get, get cut down and, and, and imperialism destroy them and they don't get the, the ability to be able to develop through struggle. This is the only organization that has been able to struggle for 50 years consistently on the ground, never, 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 never abandoning the people. Always been on, on uh, when people, when other people was forced underground, always been above ground organizing and struggling with the people. So this is the organization you wanna be a part of and y'all comrades have helped us reach our goal. Enjoy the discussion. Be back next week. Bring somebody with you. You know what I'm saying, comrades? And I appreciate everybody on the call. Um, and is there any other announcements before uh, before we get off? I know the 50th anniversary. Y'all will be hearing a lot more about the 50th anniversary and also uh, the, the African People uh, Socialist Party 2022 plenary that will be happening in February the 11th, and we will make sure we have that link and call uh, for next meeting. So, um, and if and if you are anyone that knows an African sister who is interested in, in ANWO, the African Nationalist Women Organization, please contact Comrade Sai, who is the regional uh, rep representative of ANWO in the Southern region. Uh, and if you're down and you really wanna learn more and you wanna be a part of ending the oppression of African women as a way to move African people forward. ANWO is the organization to go to. You know what I'm saying? ANWO is the organization you want to be a part of. Is there any other uh, discussions? Kundai, do you want to speak to the pain and sip that's happening? Uh -huh. oh. Yeah, um, so um, as you all know, this uh, study is hosted inside of Zinsley Consignment, which is one of our economic institutions of the African People's Socialist Party. And um, uh, under ABDEP, 
and one of our monthly fundraisers is happening. So our Kwanzaa painting sip is going to be um, on uh, December 26th. That's the first day of Kwanzaa at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you are in the area, um, Jaquita or anybody else that's in Huntsville, you want to come to the painting sip. Um, uh, you know, you have until the 23rd to purchase your ticket, but we are offering it online for people that's not in the Huntsville area also, but that deadline closes on next Wednesday, which is the 15th, just so we can make sure that we can get y'all canvas, um, in time to you before the, uh, the 26th. So, um, and you can do that by going to paintforunity.eventbrite.com and I'll put it in the chat. Uhuru, uhuru. And I appreciate that, comrade. And and the painting sips are always live, and 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 it's always fun, and 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 enjoy good fun, you know, good uh, downtime. And you always come out of there with a dynamic painting, you know. I think I might always have the best painting coming out of the painting sips, but you know, we ain't gonna talk about that right now. So, comrades, I really uh, appreciate it. I'm looking forward to the next uh, political education again. Bring forces with you, and uh, let's build this African People's Social Party. Let's uh, move towards our liberation and let's uphold African women to their rightful stature. Uh, Uhuru, Vanguard up. Uhuru, Vanguard, Vanguard up. up. Uhuru, Vanguard up. Yeah. Vanguard up. Hey, Kobe.